4.1 number 57, we are going to find our absolute maximum and the minimum value for the function 2 cosine t plus sine of 2t on the interval 0, pi over 2. To do this, we have to get our critical numbers. And the critical numbers means that we have to set our derivative equal to 0. And that's one of the possibilities for this. So we begin with our function. Our function is 2 cosine t plus sine of 2t. Let's take a derivative of this. Derivative of 2 cosine t will give you negative 2 sine t, like this. And then derivative of sine will give you cosine. You keep the inside the same for now. But then since the inside is 2t, you multiply by the root of inside because of the chain rule, so you multiply by 2. And now this is a derivative. If you put things together, we get this. Negative 2 sine t plus 2 cosine 2t, and then we have to set this equal to 0. But to set this part equal to 0, because we want to find out where is the derivative equal to 0 for the critical numbers. Well, notice that I have the 2 right here and the 2 right here. Let us just divide everything by 2, because we have an equation. We can do it like that. So I will divide everything by 2. And in that case, as we can see, this 2 and this 2 will cancel, this 2 and this 2 will cancel, and 0 divided by 2 is still equal to 0. And we can continue with this equation, will be negative sine t plus cosine 2t is equal to 0. And notice that this is sine t, and this is cosine of 2t. The angles, they disagree. So what you have to do is, you have to use one of the trig identities for cosine 2t. And the one that you have to use is, cosine 2t is equal to 1 minus 2 sine squared t. Once again, this is just a trick identity. Cosine 2t is 1 minus 2 sine squared t. This way, you will have an equation, right? This is actually a quadratic equation in terms of sine t, because here you have sine squared t, and this is sine t. What we can do is, we can put this in the standard form, namely, put the square part in the front, and then we are going to get this. Negative 2 sine squared t, minus sine t plus 1, it's equal to 0. And then to solve this quadratic equation in terms of sine t, first of all, we don't like to have negative in front of the square parts like this. Let us divide everything by negative 1. Divide everything by negative 1. This way, you see, this is negative 2 divided by negative 1, negative sine divided by negative 1, 1 divided by negative 1, 0 divided by negative 1. We are going to get a much better equation, positive 2, square, positive 2 sine squared t plus sine t, and then this is going to be minus 1 is equal to 0, right? This is a much better equation to work with. And to solve this, let me go right here. Let me go right here. Well, to solve that, we are going to factor it because you can treat this as a quadratic equation. So we can factor this out. This is going to be this is going to factor to be 2 sine t minus 1 times sine t plus 1. And you can do a quick check on this. Like how do we know this is true? Because if you multiply this together, you will get 2 sine squared t. And if you multiply these two together, 2 sine t times 1 is positive 2 sine t. right? But then if you multiply these two together, negative 1 times sine t is negative sine t. And this to combine 2 sine t minus sine t will give you positive sine t. And then finally, negative 1 times 1 will be negative 1, of course. So this is the correct factoring. And if you have the factoring, of course, you can set each factor to, to 0. So for the first factor, 2 sine t minus 1 is equal to 0. And then the second factor, sine t plus 1 is equal to 0. For the first part, what you're saying is, you want sine t to be 1 half. Put the 1 to the right hand side over the 2. You want sine t to be 1 half. And for this part, you want sine t to be negative 1. After you subtract 1 on both sides. And now, how do we solve this equation? Sine of what angle will give you 1 half? And this is how you should do it. You have to know that the definition of sine it's equal to the opposite over uh, hypotenuse, 
all right? And for you have one half, this means the opposite side is positive one, the half of two is two. And you can come up with two triangles, right? Two possible triangles. The opposite side is one, and then the half of two is, one, uh, is two. So I can draw a triangle like this. One is right here, and then two is right here, one half. Or you can also draw a triangle. One is the opposite side, and then the hypotenuse is two like this, one half, all right? And for this triangle, you know that this is a one, two, and on the third side, it's going to be square root of three. This is a special triangle, and this angle will be 30 degree, which is pi over six. And likewise, this is one, two, and then this is going to be square root of three, and this is going to be pi over six. But the whole thing is pi, so from here to here, it's going to be pi minus pi over six, will be five pi over six, right here, this angle. And on the other hand, sine t is equal to negative one. The only situation that we have right here is negative pi over two, because sine is like the y value, negative one down here for the y value, and the angle is negative pi over two, right? And now, well, what we're saying is t is equal to either pi over 6 or t is equal to 5 pi over 6 or t is equal to negative pi over 2. However, since we're only considering 0 and pi over 2, namely it's only this part of the quadrant, right, 0 degrees right here, and then pi over 2 is the 90 degree which is right here, the only critical numbers that we have is pi over 6. We are only going to consider the critical numbers, pi over 6, this one. Because this is out of the interval of consideration. Likewise, this is also out of the interval of consideration. So the only critical numbers to consider after we solve these equations is pi over 6. And now, what you do is, we are going to check. Second step is, we are going to check the values and the critical numbers and also the endpoints. So, first of all, check the critical numbers. And our function is 2 cosine of whatever t, right, plus sine of 2t. You plug in pi over 6 into t. So f of t, which is f of pi over 6, is equal to 2 cosine of pi over 6 plus sine of 2 times pi over 6. I'm just plugging pi over 6 for the critical numbers into the original function. Once again, the original function is this. Okay, and then you are going to work this out. This part we can work out. 2 times pi over 6 is going to be pi over 3. So this is what we have at the moment. This stays the same for now. And then how do we calculate cosine of pi over 6 and, cos, um, and sine of pi over 3? Well, you look at a special triangle. Pi over 6 is 30 degree. So you can draw a triangle like this. One right here, right? This is a 30, 60, 90 special triangle. One is right here, two is right here, and square root three is right here. And likewise, for pi over three, you can draw a 60, 30, 90 special triangle. Here will be pi over three, and, I mean square root three. <laughs> and then here is going to be two, and then this side is going to be one. And because of that, we can look at cosine pi over six from this triangle. Cosine pi over six is going to be adjacent, which is square root 3, over hypotenuse, which is 2. That's how we get cosine pi over 6 to be square root 3 over 2. And then sine of pi over 3, looking at this triangle, we have to do the opposite, which is square root 3, over hypotenuse, which is 2. So square root 3 over 2, like this. And in fact, this is how it is, right? They have the same denominator. I'm not going to cancel the 2. Because if I can just put them together like this, I have the 2 square root of 3. After 2 square root of 3, right, for this part, 2 square root of 3 over 2 plus square root of 3 over 2 like this. And now, what we can do is I can combine the fraction. This is like 2 right here. This is like 1 right here. So 2 plus 1 is 3 square root of 3 over 2. They are the same part, just like this. So once again, 2 square root 3 over 2 plus square root 3 over 2, you are doing 2 plus 1. 
and the denominator stays the same, 2 plus 1 is 3, and you keep the same radical, the denominator you also keep it. So, at the critical number, pi over 6, the Fourier function is 3 square root of 3 over 2, like this. And the next step is we have to check our endpoints, which is 0 and pi over 2. So we have to calculate what's the f of 0. f of 0 means 2, can, two times cosine of 0 plus 2, I mean plus sine of 2 times 0. And we know that cosine of 0 is going to be 1, and then sine of this is 2 times 0, which is 0. Sine of 0 is also 0. So altogether here, 2 times 1 is 2, plus 0, we have 2. f of 0 is equal to 2. And now for the other endpoints, f of pi over 2. So we have to calculate 2 cosine of pi over 2 plus sine of 2 times pi over 2. Once again, I just plug in pi over 2 into the x, into the t values. Well, cosine of pi over 2 is equal to 0. And this is sine of the 2 cancel of sine of pi. Sine of pi is also equal to 0. So here I have 0 right? 2 times 0 is 0, and this is also 0. 0 plus 0 is 0, of course. So we did all our calculations. Once again, let's do a quick review. The value at the critical number is going to be 3 square root of 3 over 2. And then at the endpoints, we are getting 2 and 0. So for the absolute maximum, you have to pick the biggest number from these three values. And in fact, this is going to be a bit be the biggest. You can check this on the calculator. This is going to be bigger than 2. And then this number is going to be the smallest. Well, the 0 is going to be the smallest. So our response is going to be absolute maximum. It's going to be f of pi over 6. And the value is 3 square root of 3 over 2. And then the absolute minimum happens when, x, when t is equal to pi over 2. And then the value of that is equal to 0. And this is it, right? Once again, this is it. Pi over 6 give you the maximum, and then pi over 2 will give you the minimum. And I would also like to show you guys a graph for these equations. So I will open my GeoGebra for now, and then I'll show you guys how does this look like. I'm going to graph this equation onto GeoGebra. So just give me a second to do that. 2 cosine of x and I'll add sine of 2x and you see this is how the graph will look like and this is how the graph will look like and then let me scroll this down right and as you can see if you're just considering 0 and pi over 2 and what you can do on GeoGebra is really amazing you can change um, the scale so you can just right click and then go to graphic and if you want the x-axis to be the distance of pi over 2, you can do it like this. So, because we're only considering 0 to pi over 2, as you can see, we have a maximum right here. And this maximum will happen when the x value or the t value is pi over 6. And the value of the function is 3 square root of 3 over 2, which is the y value right here. And then the minimum in this region, right on this interval, what happens when x or when the t value is pi over 2 and you get 0 for the y value, which is right here. Once again, we're only considering this part because the question says so, we're only considering 0 and pi over 2. So once again, here's the maximum and then here is the minimum. Absolute max, absolute mint. And that's it.